Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to another exciting design tutorial with UX Mate. Today, we are going to learn how to create a clock animation using variables, and that is going to be a dynamic timer animation. Make sure you already subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon next to it. If you are not doing that, you are going to miss a lot of exciting design content. Also, guys, as always, make sure you know you watch the entire video because each and every step has to be followed in the same order. If you skip any of the step, you might you know not get the exact results which you are looking for. Also, I have a bonus tip at end of this video, so make sure you know watch out and enjoy this video. So let's jump into the Figma and get started with it. So what we have today is you know uh, as always we have some uh, basic setup here, nothing fancy. We just have created an empty clock frame and then we have a loading animation which is our testing frame. In the empty clock frame, you know if you see. I have created a, a separate frame, a nested frame called rotation because you know I want to animate this this clock numbers you can say or you know the uh, representative lines uh, for the numbers uh, with our timer. I have created you know one frame where I'll be you know uh, creating all my numbers and then I have a dynamic uh, I have a global frame which is going to be my component right. So I'll just rename this clock slash frame one because you know that would be my first variant of the component and now i'll be creating you know i'll select clock a uh, frame and i'll be creating numbers in that so my first number would be uh i'll just create zero for now we are anyways going to be you know uh, created dynamically and we are going to assign the variables to these i'll just create two layers of the numbers and my you know first uh, let's call it first number only first number Oops. first number and let's call this second number okay our base setup is done our uh, you know uh, frame is ready to convert into a component but before that you know let's create the variables and assign them here itself so it will you know save some efforts now let's create a couple of variables go to the local variables create variable and as you know we want a timer animation definitely that has to be a number variable so let's create a number variable and uh, call it first number i'll just say first number which is going to be zero uh, as you know a default number and let's create one more number variable that is going to be our second number i'll explain why do we need two numbers we can go ahead with the one number as well but yes, i'll show you you know uh, why do we need a second number here you can simply you know avoid this and uh, you can still go ahead with a single number still same results can be achieved okay uh, and now let's create one more variable which is completely optional you can skip this but i would prefer to you know create a variable to store the max limit or where you want to reset the timer right so let's create a variable number oops sorry uh, i want to create a number variable not a string create variable number and i'll call it max limit or you may call it reset as well max limit and let's uh, give it 5 for the testing purpose okay uh, so our you know variable setup is done now we have to assign those variables to the number uh, you know the, the text layers which we have created as you know first number and second number so let me close the variable panel for now and uh, let me select first number and let me assign the variable first number let me select the second number and assign the variable second number uh, i guess you know we haven't updated the value of the second number which we want as a one you know uh, the default value for the second number so let's create it as one okay uh, now let's duplicate this entire frame and uh, give it frame two uh, because you know as we are going to do animation i always prefer to have the names in the you know sequence where you know frame one frame two frame three which makes a little bit easier to refer to the frames if you are you know working with a complex animation in figma even you know uh, doesn't matter in figma but any animation tool if you go you know they refer uh, those frames or keyframes as you know frame only so it is you know much easier to follow the same convention in the figma as well now let's select both of them or you know let's first you know complete the uh, animation part as well or, or I'll show you, you know, uh, why do we need second number. So I'll select both of them 
and i'll create a component set from the selection okay so our clock component is ready now let me go to the component and let me you know oh, oops i guess uh, we made a mistake we we wanted to have first number and second number in the clock frame not in the rotation frame also you know make sure you are doing it in the same way because we are going to use you know rotation to rotate the clock here uh, now as we already have selected the rotation let's complete the rotation part let's do it a 90 degree of the you know rotation to this so it will uh, be rotating around you know uh, a 90 degrees and which will create a complete you know uh, rotary effect now let's hide the second number for now uh, from you know both of the variants and now just you know create the uh, logic which we want to create our timer so i'll go to the prototype i'll you know first create a after delay interaction which is going to be somewhere around 1 second because you know it is going to be you know a, a one second long timer you can make it a lesser one as well uh, doesn't matter we will be changing that uh, but as of now let's keep it 1 second uh, which is going to be 1000 milliseconds and we'd be doing a change to where you know with the smart animate with ease in ease out or uh, ease out whichever you know you prefer and i'll just you know uh, do a reverse animation as well that is going to be again after delay uh, with maybe 800 let's keep it 800 doesn't matter or let's keep it uh, 1000 only and this is going to be our smart animate uh and uh, that is going to be uh, no sorry this is not uh, this is going to be an instant thing because we want to immediately you know uh, go to the first frame and reset the animation or, or restart the animation right so let's close this and let's bring this component to the testing frame let's align it to the middle of the frame and let's you know test this product great our uh, basic animation is ready you know our clock is animating now let's you know uh, add the dynamic logic here select the first frame go to the delay and when we are doing change to uh, let's you know let me just create a action here which is going to be a set variable as you know we want to keep on appending to the first number so my first number will be first number plus 1 always so it will be you know appending the first number with 1 second every time my animation is you know or my you know uh prototype is being uh what we say you know it is being triggered right so after every second we will keep on adding one to our first number now with this you know we have created the uh, the nice and you know uh, cool animation but we are not giving it you know uh, or you know more dynamic behavior which is kind of you know adjusting the limit and adjusting the animation as well so it is just you know statically changing on the same place So now let's you know uh, add some animation to this. So as you know this is my first number and that's why you know the second number comes in the picture. So now what we have to do is whenever you know we change it from you know first number to or first frame to second frame we want to you know move the first number to the uh, left of the frame and you know second number comes from the right side. So it is basically you know going to be a uh, 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 you know left Uh, from the right side the number will come to the center and it will go to the left as you know it is uh, it is changing so let's enable the second number in both of the frames in frame 1 we'll be selecting the first number okay and we'll be uh, sorry we'll be selecting the second number because second number is coming from the second frame and we'll scale it down to somewhere around 40 points or maybe 30 uh, whatever you know you feel if you want it from the center from the top or from the bottom it is completely up to you you can change this uh, i'll keep it from the top uh, i like you know that uh, curvy animation you know it is coming from the top and coming to the center and going again back to the top okay and i'm just moving it on the right hand side now i'll go to the frame 2 i'll select the first number in this case because we are on the frame 2 and i'll do it in the same way 40 uh, or 30 whatever you have did and i'll just again uh, oops i'll again just you know align this to the top of the number and i'll move it on the left hand side so for the first frame we have moved second number to the right for the second frame we have moved first number to the left okay and we have reduced the size to uh, approximately 40 pixels 40 points or you know whatever the unit figma is 
uh, let's taste this how it is looking so every time you know it will keep on appending to the first number and second number we haven't add adjusted anything yet so it is always showing us one by default okay now what we have to do we have to apply the same logic to the second number as well okay uh, let's go to the prototype and when uh, do we want to add to the second number when you know we are changing the frame from uh, uh, frame 2 to frame 1 because uh, first you know we have 0 and when we are changing this frame 1 to frame 2 we are uh, adding 1 to the first number which is making it 1 and we already you know created second number as 1 just to make sure our animation is seamless and that's why you know we need two numbers where you know first number is 0 second number is 1 right so change to uh, we'll add a set variable condition here my second number would be second number plus 1 okay now test this okay great now you know it is uh, working as we are expecting so if you see uh, every time when you know number is changing it is you know going with an cool animation as well as you know it is keep on adding to the numbers so i hope guys you are enjoying this video and make sure you hit the like button because you know uh, whenever you like the video it gives a positive signal to the youtube algorithm which helps us to grow and you know uh, to reach more audience so uh, make sure also you subscribe and hit the bell icon because that will keep you updated with all our upcoming uploads so yes uh, now we are done with the first part or you know the base setup of the timer animation with an infinite loop now what we have to do we have to make sure you know we are resetting the timer at a particular count okay so now let's close this and as you know our last uh, like because you know whenever we are checking the conditions uh, make sure you are checking them at right frame right because if you do it you know incorrectly you might not get the uh, proper result because timing might get mismatched so, so as you know uh, we want to check the end or you know the max limit which is always going to be determined at the last frame of the animation that's why you know we'd be checking that at uh, frame 2 right so let's go to the frame 2 and let's you know add a if condition which is going to be a conditional behavior right and in the condition i'll just scroll it a little bit up in the condition what is going to be our condition we would be selecting second number you know if second number is greater than uh, what our max limit variable okay Oops, sorry uh, and then what we have to do if my second number is greater than max limit I have to reset the first number to zero okay and I'll adding one more nested action to the same if you can create one more if block but that is unnecessary you can keep on adding multiple actions under the same if block if my uh, second number is greater than max limit I'll add or I'll set my uh, first number to zero and my second number to one uh, to their default values okay uh, so yes uh, our basic setup is done and uh, why we are checking it with second number because our first number is starting from 0 and second number is starting from 1 and you know uh, when it is starting from 0 it will be you know uh, it will be you know basically reach uh, one number you know uh, so uh, when you know our first number is 5 second number would be uh, 6 because it is starting from 1 so that's why we have to check always at the second number and we are doing it on the last frame so anyways our first number is already out of the frame and we are testing it uh, we are you know uh, making all the operations on the second frame so that's why we need to check the condition on the second number so make sure you always you know check it on the second number now let's taste this interaction okay uh, it should you know go up to five and it should be resetting the animation to zero okay great it is uh, working as expected so it is resetting when it is reached to the maximum limit so uh, we are you know done with the timer tutor timer part you know or the timer animation part of the tutorial as i promised we are going to have a bonus at the end of this video yes definitely would be having a bonus 
well before that make sure you uh, are enjoying the video and you are hitting the that like button break it down guys <laughs> So let me close this and what we are going to do, we'll be also checking, uh, you know, by mod, like we'll also check if, you know, max limit is working fine. Uh, if we make it, you know, 10 or any other and that should be definitely working just for sake of, you know, uh, confirmation I'm uh, doing it. So let's set it for 10 and the bonus part is, you know, now we are done with the timer part. But let's say we want to add a progress bar, which is directly connected to the timer, right? So let's create a progress bar. So uh, let's let's have it maybe you know somewhere around 300 pixels. Align it to the center. Give it a nice and cool you know height. It is up to you. And I'll you know set it uh, maybe somewhere around 10 for the corner radius. I'll just move it a little up, and I'll set it to probably white. Because, you know, uh, I'll still, you know, I would like to make it a little bit more smaller, a slick, you know, progress bar. So what we have to do, guys, uh, when, you know, our timer is starting from zero, we want to, you know, uh, go to the, uh, our, you know, progress bar would be, you know, starting from zero and it will go up to the 300, right? So as you know, we have a uh, duration of uh, 10 or, you know, the maximum count of 10 uh, then you know based on that we are making we are going to make our calculations so to work with the progress bar we need to create one more variable let's create one more variable which is going to be progress bar again that is going to be a number only progress width yes and that is going to be zero by default we'll be updating it let's close this now go to the uh, our first component and you know we'll be selecting the component and where we are setting up first number variable we'll be creating one more action would we'll be set uh, setting you know a set variable which variable we have to set we have to set the progress bar variable at uh, the progress bar width and it is going to be in proportion with the first number so i want first number into 30 okay because our uh, final width is 300 and we you know uh, we are going to you know from 0 to 10 so you know every time we would be multiplying the first number with 30 which will give us you know uh, the percentage in tens or tens like 10 20 30 40 50 60 and up to 100 percent so let's uh, do it you know multiply it with 30 so which will again you know uh, which will take you know uh, the starting width with the 30 pixels up to 300 pixels so let's make it 30 and now the trick is to assign this variable to the width of the progress bar so select the progress bar or the rectangle which we have created and click on this you know small assign variable button in the width of the progress bar and select the progress bar width now test the prototype great it is you know uh, progressing a little every time when you know number is progressed from uh, a one to do or you know whatever the number which we are giving so guys i hope you have enjoyed this video and you know uh, you are enjoying the other videos as well on the channel if you have not checked the other videos make sure you go ahead and check out all our uh, videos on the variables all our videos on the smart animation in figma also we are creating shots uh, which are you know more for the quick and you know uh, easy loading animations which you can create uh, you know good looking appealing loading animations within the minutes right uh, so make sure you are following you know the feed uh, where you know we are posting some quizzes uh, in the community tab we are posting you know uh, some facts about the ux so uh, also guys make sure you know uh, you are checking out the blogs on our website as well i'll be putting the website link in the description so where you know you can find the blogs on the ux and uh, more topics around it so yes till then uh, keep watching keep learning keep designing we'll see you with the next video very soon with you know another dashing topic definitely